Okay, folks, so now we're gonna write the beginnings of our own sweaty. What was the word that Dev said from page 10 about how somebody feels? Shout it out. Disgusted. Now, let's just copy down what I'm gonna put down now. We could just put down disgusted. Uh-oh, I put dig. How do, how do you guys spell this? Actually, guys, if I make a mistake like this, should I just cross it out like this? How should I cross it out instead? Everyone, actually, please do that because it's really important. So, dig. Oh, made a mistake. Yep, so write down disgusted. Now, interestingly, gustation is a taste. If you add dis to a word at the start of the word, what are you doing with the rest of the word? If you disassemble, assemble is put together, disassemble is to? Take it apart. Um, if gustation is the taste of something, that's presumably quite nice. What is disgust? Something that, like. wonderful, you don't like the taste or the, or the feeling of in your mouth. Okay, folks, so we got disgusted, right? Now we can just start saying some connotations of disgusted. What are some connotations of disgusted? Go. Foul. Foul. What else? Go. Nasty. Nasty. What else? Repulsive. Repulsive. Good. What else? Very upset. Good. A good word for very upset is distraught. Fortunately, my computer appears to be break, broken at the moment. I think what's happened now is that I've got a problem with my computer. That means that uh, my screen's broken. Sorry, guys. So that's an R there. That's actually incredibly disheartening because my computer's so expensive. Now, that is essentially what we're doing for sweaty, but is that really very effective? I mean, is that really what we want to do for a sweaty in terms of, do we really know what the answer is about? No. So this is why we need sweaty now, and let's now expand this answer so it really hits the sweaty way that we want to do it. Now, would you guys, do you guys want me to make that screen a bit bigger for you on the board? I'm just going to pull So we're now going to actually make this into sweaty, and sweaty has five parts. How many parts? Five. So, each of those five parts there, and feel free to number them, label them, and to, actually, I made a mistake. How many parts are there? Six. The six parts are there, including the yes, it answers the question. To do a sweaty, you really need a question that you're answering, okay? Let us just return to the, the book for a moment, because someone please pass me a copy of Well Rider. Could you come and physically pass it here? Thank you. Eight people here are wonderful. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Um, we're actually going to now look at where that word disgusted comes from. Koro reveals the gender of his granddaughter and he says it and he's, he's disgusted as he says that. So what question do you think that we're going to need to have to write a sweaty? Why was Koro Now, you see, with that question, we want to analyze how he feels. If we say, why was he disgusted? We then can't use the word disgusted to say why he's disgusted, which is certainly thinking along the right lines. Lewis? Um, how Good. So now you're starting to think now about, about how we're going to weave this in. The question is usually going to be quite general. So let's now write down the question. Three, two, one. Cha. So, underneath this, write down question. The question is, what do we learn about Koro? Question mark. Is that very specific or is it very general? Okay, so we see some of these questions can be really quite general, especially, I think, at our level in year seven. So what do we learn about Koro? What's the very first letter in sweaty? Uh, S. Statement, um, S means what? Statement. 
So we now need to give an answer. What's one thing we learn about Coro then that relates to this word disgusted? What's one thing we learn about his character? Go. We learn that he has what that's a wonderful answer. What's another possible what's another possible answer apart from he has a temper? Dev? That maybe yeah, he's sexist as well. He has dramatic he has dramatic or drastic mood swings. Very good. Go. Please. Please. Folks, can I just point out that he had four wonderful answers there? Which of his answers will fit best with the word he's discussed in? I think there. So let's do this now. Uh, we can actually write down the name of the author to start us off with this, yeah? So three, two, one, cha. Let's write down our very first sweaty. Im. Uh-oh, what mistake have I made? How do we correct it? Line aside, so, ear him Imiera presents Coro. Imiera Imiera presents Coro as having what? A what kind of temper? An angry, a sharp, a devastating. I'm going to put an ellipsis there and you put something else rather than the ellipsis, a terrible temper, an awful temper. That's actually going to take away my keyboard there. As having an awful temper. Okay folks, we've written that down roughly. What's the next two letters of sweaty? Tell the person next to you. Weave. Folks, what does the word weave actually mean? If you weave in two threads, what happens to the two threads? Good. Can we just say now, um, disgusted? We've got to say where that word disgusted comes from. How does the author use the word disgusted? It comes when what? When Three, two, one, cha. Change. When? Do we say when he? When who? When Coro finds out what news? What's a, what's another word for find out? Discover. Good. I think that's better. When Coro discovers, discovers what? Okay. Discovers that who? That Kahu, Kahu is what? Is a girl. When, when Koro discovers that Kahu is a girl, comma. By the way, just out of interest, what is the verb in that part of the sentence? What's the doing word in that part of the sentence? Shout it out. Discovers. Well done. Be because we've got this conjunctive here, when, that's connecting this part of the sentence with the next part, we need a comma between the two. Okay. You'll find out more about that later, I'm sure. So when Coro discovers that Kahu is a girl, he is what? Disgusted. Now, because the word disgusted comes from the actual book, what do we put around it? Uh, we put the, the quote marks. They look just like speech marks. He is... This, oh, oh, I put dig again. What do we do? And kiss, kiss. Well done. He is disgusted. So um, I, I've got some white spaces where I can't actually write in the moment class, so you have to forgive me. So he's disgusted. Then close speech marks. And then put a full stop for the time being on the other side. Okay. We're, are we happy enough? Let's tick off so far what parts of sweat have we done. Have you done the statement? Yes. Yes. Have you done the weave? Yes. Have you done the evidence? Yes. Now then, have we got the technical term? Oh. Now the technical term is just the term that describes the language technique. Um, 
What word type is disgusted? Is it a verb, a noun, or an adjective? Tell the person next to you. Pause. Fox, um, a noun is a name, a verb is an action, an adjective describes how you're feeling. What word type is disgusted? Shout it out. Well done. Now, folks, we can then, we then do this. This adjective. This adjective. If it was a verb, what would you write? Simple, simple, yeah? Who's got some more brain power left, by the way? Five, I've got more brain power. One, sir, this is taking up all my brain power. Okay, hands down. I won't give you anything else. All I'll say is that if you're really quite good with this right now, you could add an extra kind of thing. So you could say this disgusting, well, not disgusting, this, this terrible adjective or this dangerous adjective or this upsetting adjective. But you don't have to do that yet. This adjective, then we find like a word like evokes or highlights or something like that. Let me show you. Displays, explains, exposes. Someone choose one of those words there in the black thing. Go. Displays. Let's put down displays. Are you guys allowed that sheet in your assessment? Absolutely. You're learning. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool. This adjective displays. Absolutely. Now, what does that word disgusted display about Coro? Can you just say that he's got a temper now? We want to get the connotations of disgusted. What were some of the connotations of disgusted we had before? Now, is Co now is Kahu nasty and foul? Yeah. Is Koro himself nasty and foul? No. What about him is nasty and foul? His temper. Not just his temper, but his... His mindset. His, who said mindset? That's amazing. Displays how Koro's mindset or personality attitude is nasty and what what's another connotation nasty and mean nasty and vile i think is even better because mean kind of means the same as nasty but it's fine full stop um where do we have the technical term in this sweaty my class where's the technical term in that sweaty uh, now by technical term we mean are we describing the language technique that's being used? Where do we describe the language technique of the word disgusted? Now that's, now good guess, that's not the technical term. Adjective is a, te adjective is a technical term. Why? What are some other technical terms apart from adjective? Go. Verb and noun, wonderful. Metaphor is another one. Alliteration is another one. Personification is another one. Everyone, please say another technical term to someone next to them. Off, off you go. Pause in two and one, folks. Every every word is either a noun, verb, adjective, or something else. You can always use those. Metaphors, alliteration, all these other ones as well. Folks, let's look, let's look back at this. Do we have do we have the technical term? Yes. Let's tick that. Do we have now the analysis? Well, the analysis is it analyzes. Now to explain what analysis is, I want to show you. Um could someone please pass me the pencil case? So that pass over here, please. Now then. Thank you. To analyze something, this is what we do. To analyze the pencil case, we take out one object and we describe it. We what? Describe it. So we might describe this as being a highlighter. We might describe it with like a bright top here. We put it back. Then we take another thing. One thing at a time, okay? Again, bright, but this one's pink. It's a bit more feminine if it's pink. We put it back. Now we've got some scissors. These are quite useful and these are multi-purpose. Take this out. We just We analyze it. How do we analyze it? Describe it. How would you describe this? Now, folks, this is amazing, by the way. Folks, can I point out that do we just analyze the denotations? We analyze the... What are the connotations of all these bright colors? 
it's quite fun and like enjoyable, yes? Yeah. So if I'm going to analyze the pencil case, that's what I'm doing. I'm describing the connotations of each one. Who's got some brain power left? Hands down. There's one layer above analysis, and that's called evaluate. If I was to analyze you, I might pitch your eyes and describe your eyes. I might then pitch your hair and describe your hair. If I did this a hundred times, would I really know who you are? If I just described all the things about you, would I really know, know you? Therefore, there's another layer where you evaluate. I decide what's the most important things about the pencil case, or what is a general feeling about the pencil case? What is a general feeling about this pencil case? That it's quite, and therefore it feels, it's, it's fun, it's useful, it's busy, it's interesting. So folks, look at this. Analysis then, for sweaty, analysis is describing really uh, one thing at a time, like one quotation at a, t at a time. Can we know Koru just by describing him one quotation at a time? No, but that's generally what we do. If we get several quotations, can we start to evaluate him and say he's bad tempered because he's really passionate about having a boy or something like this? Okay. Do you have to do that all in one paragraph? We could probably analyze individual things about him and then near the end we can evaluate what's the overall feeling. Five, that makes complete sense. Three, it kind of makes sense. One, it's a bit complicated, so, so I don't quite get it yet. Okay, hands down. My class, the time is now coming up to five minutes before the end of the lesson. Do you think you could start to write your own sweaty if I gave you um, the statement and the evidence already, D does that make sense? Five yes, one not yet, sir. Not, not really at all. Okay, hands down. That's more than fine. We'll, we're going to practice this a lot and a lot. Okay, and you guys will become experts at this, I promise. So let me just show you another example of a sweaty. First of all, let's see what's wrong with this. Um, at the beginning of the book, Koru is not pleased that Kahu has been born. He says that he will have nothing to do with her. This quote shows that he doesn't like her because she is a girl. What's the, what's the problem with that paragraph? What's the problem with that sweaty? Go. Good. It's quite vague. Does it talk about the connotations of like nothing or her? No, it's, 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 it's very vague indeed. Okay. Look at this instead. Instead, we zoom into one word, okay? We imply also that Kohu blames himself for taking place of a boy. We zoom into that one word and we look at that. Now, folks, look at this standard. Some of you will get to the standard very quickly. Some of you will take a long time. All I care is that you work hard. Look at this, look at this example, Sweaty. Is this example in your, in your actual booklets? Okay, look at this. Koro is disappointed and angry when Kahu is born. Notice we have two adjectives. He grunts, a girl, she has broken the male line of descent in our tribe. We have the weave in there, we say where it comes from. The noun girl is written in italics, indicating to the reader, again mentioning the idea of the reader, that Koro emphasizes this word. This could suggest his shock and disgust that Kahu is born a girl. Again, got shock and disgust. Can you see this word over here, my class? What's this little word here, or this phrase here say? This is what we call like a signpost, I think. What's the job of a signpost? Tells you where to go, yeah? It's saying there's some more, there's some more analysis here. In addition, Koro accuses Kahu of breaking the male line of descent, implying he blames Kahu herself for being born and taking place of the boy he was expecting. What do you guys think? of a man who blames a girl for being born a girl. What, what kind of man is he? He's sexist. He's sexist and horrible. horrible. And he's, he's probably quite naive. Do you know the word naive, my class? Yeah. Naive means that he's quite immature. He doesn't really understand how things work. Okay. Now, folks, looking at this, 
We want to get you guys to have good habits in doing sweaty right now. And again, here's the list of 10 tips for, for success. You guys will refer to these over the next series of lessons, okay? Um, folks, our next lesson is when? Tomorrow. It's going to be, not tomorrow, it's going to be on Thursday, okay? On Thursday, we're going to set you guys some homework to do some sweaties over the course of the weekend, okay? And you'll watch this video and you guys will give it a go. It's really important that that's the hardest homework that you work at. Yes. Go. Yeah. Everyone say goodbye, please, to the internet. Goodbye.